Unit Seven, Page Fifty Nine. Read, Exercise Two. Read and listen to the text. Nature or nurture? Who enjoys doing exams? Very few school students seem to, but they would all agree that a student who does well in exams and tests is a student who is intelligent. But where does intelligence come from? The nineteenth-century scientist Francis Galton was one of the first to study human intelligence seriously. Galton wanted to discover if it was hereditary, or if it was a product of people's environments. In other words, were people born intelligent, or could intelligence be improved through education? Following years of research. Galton concluded that most of our brain power comes from our genes, and that our surroundings don't have much effect on how clever we are. Galton's theory that intelligence was hereditary dominated psychology throughout the 20th century. In fact, studies in the 1960s of identical twins succeeded in reinforcing Galton's views. The twins in the study. Had been separated at birth and adopted by different families, so they had never lived together. In some cases, they didn't even know about each other. Researchers interviewed the twins when they had reached adulthood, and discovered that they had all achieved remarkably similar positive results in their studies. This seemed to be clear proof that intelligence. Was passed on from generation to generation. However, one professor of psychology, Richard E. Nisbet, was not convinced. For years, Nisbet had adhered to the belief that most of our cerebral skills, or lack of them, were inherited. However, he soon realized that there was a flaw in the study on the twins. There was no information about the families who had adopted them. Through his own research, he discovered that the adoptive families all had middle-class backgrounds. In other words, they were families who were able to provide children with a good education. Nisbet discovered that all the sets of twins had been brought up in almost identical environments, and had each received a good education. Couldn't this be the reason for the similarity in results between them? Nisbet believed that this was the case. Further studies by a university professor in New Zealand, James Flynn, confirmed the idea that the environment greatly affects how clever we are. Flynn had studied lots of IQ, intelligence quotient tests, that were carried out around the world during the twentieth century. These tests are used to measure a person's intelligence, and someone managing a score of a hundred is said to have an average level. Flynn noticed that people who had regular access to education and a good diet had been able to increase their average IQ by thirty points. Nisbet and Flynn have shown that although our ancestors' genes have a lot to do with intellect. It also depends on the opportunities we get to develop our brains. But of course, parents have a big influence on that too. Parents can help their children to realize their potential by speaking to them frequently, by reading to them, and by encouraging them to be aware of the world around them. It's no use being born with innate intelligence if nobody encourages you to make the best of it. Unit Seven, Page Sixty Two. Listen, Exercises One and Two. Listen to the radio pro. People have dreamed for centuries of creating robots that will do boring household chores and even entertain us. A thousand years ago, the famous inventor Al Jazari from Mesopotamia. Was already making plans for robots that could serve drinks to guests and play musical instruments. 
But if people were thinking about artificial intelligence all those years ago, why do robots still only exist in science fiction novels and films? To answer that question, we have Professor Harris from Hillfields University of Technology in the studio. Professor Harris, will we ever have robots that do the housework and run errands for us? Well, that depends on what you think the word robot means. I think if Al Jazari could see a modern house with all its electronic gadgets, such as washing machines, computers, and so on, he would say that we are surrounded by artificial intelligence. Yes, but when most of us hear the words artificial intelligence, we think of a robot that is almost a copy of a human being, don't we? True, and there have been important developments in that field. In 2006, the Japanese introduced the world to Asimo, a robot that can run at six kilometers an hour and carry out simple tasks. Yes, I've seen the video on the internet. It's entertaining, but it doesn't look like it's ready to take the drudgery out of people's daily lives. Why is it taking so long to develop useful robots? Well, one reason is that robots don't always recognize objects, and they still don't respond to speech and sound. Does that mean we won't see them doing the washing up for a long time? <laughs> Possibly not, but artificial intelligence already plays a big part in our lives. A lot of factory jobs are done by simple robots that don't get bored by repetitive tasks, and as I mentioned before, our homes are full of appliances that can perform one or two functions that make our lives a lot easier. Robots are already here, but not in the way that science fiction often presents them. Well, thank you very much, Professor Harris. Now, before we hear the news, Unit Seven. Page sixty-five. Language skills. Exercise one. Listen and check. Hi, Jamie. How is your exam revision going?、Uh, don't talk about it. I don't think my nerves can take any more. What about you? I'm having a break. I've started to become really scatterbrained. I can't concentrate any more. <laughs> I know what you mean. I've been swatting up for the history exam for hours, but I can't remember anything. Yeah, my head is so full of facts that I think my brain is going to explode.、Oh, I know. I hate rote learning loads of numbers, dates, and so on. I wish there was another way of testing us. Well, there's only a week left. Then you can spend all summer improving your knowledge of the subject by rereading your school books in the sun on the beach. <laughs> ha ha. I think I'd prefer to remain ignorant. Okay, I prefer finishing the exams quickly, but I still don't enjoy sitting exams at all. Nobody does, but it's a good system for revising and reinforcing what we've learnt.、Oh, so that's why you're taking such a long break, is it? Everyday English Seven, Teacher's Book, Page One Hundred and Fourteen, Expressing Opinions. Exercises one and two. Listen to the dialogues. Dialogue one. What's your opinion on global warming, Molly? I think it's a very real danger. Let's not forget that extreme weather conditions like tsunamis and hurricanes are becoming more common in the world. All you have to do is look at the figures to see that the temperature of the Earth is rising. The Antarctic is now 2.5 degrees Celsius warmer than it used to be, and over 80 percent of the glaciers have started to melt. It's important to bear in mind that this is likely to make the sea levels rise, which will cause floods in coastal areas all over the world. Personally, I'm quite worried about it. Dialogue two. Karen, what do you think of violent computer games? I believe very strongly that these games have a very negative effect on players. Statistics show that one in four of the people who play video games are under the age of eighteen, which means that they are still children. These games are not suitable for this group, as they are not yet mature enough to deal with the images they see on the screen. I'm absolutely convinced that they make people more aggressive, 
and I would urge companies to stop producing them. Dialogue 3 How do you feel about endangered species, Tony? Very concerned. Nobody could deny that plants and animals are dying out at an alarming rate nowadays. Recent figures show that nearly 40% of the world's living organisms are on the endangered species list. The main reason for this is the destruction of the rainforests. I really do think that these areas should be offered special protection so that the existing flora and fauna don't disappear forever. Dialogue 4 Gary, do you believe in spending money on space exploration? Well, it seems like we haven't made much progress, really. But we must remember that our interest in outer space is relatively recent. More than two-thirds of the citizens in this country are in favour of continued investment in this field, and I would agree with them. There's no doubt in my mind that we can learn so much about our own planet by studying others. Everyday English 7 Teacher's Book Page 114 Expressing Opinions Exercise 3 Listen and repeat. Nobody could deny that... I believe very strongly that... It's important to bear in mind that... There's no doubt in my mind that... I really do think that... We must remember that... Let's not forget that... I'm absolutely convinced that...